وَلَوْ كَانَ مِنْ عِنْدِ غَيْرِ اللَّهِ لَوَجَدُوا فِيهِ اخْتِلَافًا كَثِيرًا فَلَا يَتَدَبَّرُونَ الْقُرْآنَ وَلَوْ كَانَ مِنْ عِنْدِ غَيْرِ اللَّهِ لَوَجَدُوا فِيهِ اخْتِلَافًا كَثِيرًا السلام عليكم ورحمة الله إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد The Quran, the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala We have as Muslims a duty and that is to recite the book of Allah to ponder over the verses, the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to act according to the Quran and this is the purpose basically of our life is to establish the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we cannot establish the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala without the revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The protected revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the final one, the book of Allah, the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and the sunnah, the way of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Two things as the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in the authentic hadith, that if we hold fast to them, we would never be led astray. We would never be perished. And that's why it is our duty to take the Qur'an seriously. And in this program, I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide us, to make us among those who recite the Qur'an and ponder over the Qur'an so that we would act according to it. And I would like from the viewers, uh, those who would call or send us emails, how can we practically translate these verses into our everyday life? And this is not basically people making the tafsir, it's about making sure that you are living the Qur'an. The benefit that we learn from the verses that we say every week, that we learn from these verses, something in our daily activities, something with the deeds of our hearts, the things that we say with our tongue, and the different things that we do with our limbs. And this is basically what Al-Iman is. This is what faith is. The heart and the tongue and the different parts of the body should be according to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from us. And every verse in the Qur'an has great benefits in it that would affect our hearts, our tongues, and the different actions that we do in our life. And how can we extract this benefit? How can we live the Qur'an in our life? Because the Prophet wasallam, as Aisha radiallahu anha, she said, when she was asked about the manners of the Prophet wasallam, she said, كَانَ خُلُقُهُ الْقُرْآنِ That the manners of the Prophet wasallam was the Qur'an. So this is not just in theory, this is something that has to be very clear in all of our affairs. Inwardly, outwardly, all of our relationships, everything that we do on the face of earth has to come from the Qur'an, the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and the sunnah, the way of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, because it's basically the Qur'an moving and walking and talking and so on. We reached verse number 105 from Surah Al-Baqarah. This great surah, this great chapter of the Qur'an, that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, as we heard before, that this surah, would be enough for the person to get rid of the sorcerers and the, those who would have evil uh, towards the Muslims if a person would recite Surah Al-Baqarah. Such a great surah in it is the most virtuous verse in the Qur'an, which is Ayatul Kursi. Verse 105, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم ما يود الذين كفروا من أهل الكتاب ولا المشركين أن ينزل عليكم من خير من ربكم والله يختص برحمته من يشاء والله ذو الفضل العظيم This verse means neither those who disbelieve from the people of the scripture nor the polytheists wish that any good should be sent down to you from your Lord but Allah selects for his mercy whom he wills and Allah is the possessor of great bounty 
This verse, like all the verses in the Quran, we heard we recited them in the Arabic language. So we need to make sure that this is the medicine that we first move our tongues with. The Quran is the exact words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is the cure for all the diseases in the heart and we need to make sure that we recite the Quran. And if you're not having the ability to recite the Quran, to take the time to learn how to recite the Quran perfectly. And the Prophet ﷺ giving the glad tidings for all Muslims, for all those who want to recite the Quran, that either you are trying your best and you're struggling through the recitation of the Quran, the Prophet ﷺ said that you would get two rewards, one for the recitation and one for the effort that you put in. And those who, al-mahiru bil Quran, those who would recite the Quran perfectly, they are with the scribes, with the angels. So it's something that a person would never lose. This is a gain that a person needs to do. So reciting the Quran in the Arabic language, and then we need to learn this beautiful language that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose for the last revelation to be protected with this language, the language of the Quran, the Arabic language, which is another subject that we need to stress all the times. We need to take the time to learn it. We need to teach it to our children. This is the identity of the Muslims all over the world. doesn't matter whether a Muslim is in the East or in the West. Something that should bring the Muslims together, the Quran, of course, and the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. And we should be able to understand one another with the language that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose for the last revelation. This verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is informing the believers and giving them from His bounty subhanahu wa ta'ala, warning them from the disbelievers. From the disbelievers among the people of the book and the disbelievers, like at the time of the Prophet wasallam, all forms of disbelief. Since disbelief is all one thing, whether the people have different beliefs, but they're all in the category of disbelief. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, وَمَن يَبْتَغِي غَيْرَ الْإِسْلَامِ دِينًا فَلَنْ يُقْبَلَ مِنْهَ That whoever takes a religion, a way of life other than al-Islam, to submit oneself to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it would not be accepted from the person. So this is the true religion, the, tr- the religion of all messengers of Allah from Adam alayhi salam to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. So those who did not accept the truth and the religion of al-Islam are disbelievers. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is warning the believers saying, مَا يَوَدُّ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا They would never have any wishes of good to you. مِنْ أَهْلِ الْكِتَابِ وَلَا الْمُشْرِكِينَ From the people of the book, the Jews and the Christians, and the Mushrikeen, the polytheists, أَنْ يُنَزَّلَ عَلَيْكُمْ مِنْ خَيْرٍ مِنْ رَبِّكُمْ They would never want to wish any good to you that should be sent down to you from your Lord. And this verse has a reason for it. Since at the time of the Prophet ﷺ, the people of uh, Bani Israel, the Jews at the time of the Prophet ﷺ, when the Prophet ﷺ was sent, and they were going around the idolaters, the idol worshippers, telling them that there's a messenger is about to come. And we would be the first to those who would follow the messenger, as it will come in other verses in Surah Al-Baqarah. But when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent the messenger ﷺ, a lot of them, they disbelieved in him. Why? Out of the envy that they thought that the messenger will be from among themselves. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he is the one, the owner of all things. So when the, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent the messenger ﷺ, they opposed the Prophet ﷺ. And they would never want any good to come down to the Prophet ﷺ or to the believers. And this is out of the envy or the hasad. مَا يَوَدُّ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا مِنْ أَهْلِ الْكِتَابِ وَلَا الْمُشْرِكِينَ أَنْ يُنَزَّلَ أَنْ يُنَزَّلَ Meaning that it comes down عَلَيْكُمْ unto you مِنْ خَيْرٍ مِنْ رَبِّكُمْ مِنْ خَيْرٍ Any good. That's why خَيْرٍ here is نَكِرَ Meaning any good. They don't want any good to come to you from your Lord. مِنْ خَيْرٍ مِنْ رَبِّكُمْ وَاللَّهُ يَخْتَصُّ بِرَحْمَتِهِ مَنْ يَشَاءُ Which says, but Allah selects for His mercy whom He wills. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala choose whom He wills subhanahu wa ta'ala for His mercy, for His messengership, for the revelation to be revealed. This is not for the human beings to make that decision. It is not for the human beings to choose or to make a decision that if the messenger is from this tribe or from this race, I would follow him. 
But if it's a messenger that comes from a different race or different tribe, that a person would reject him, this is definitely show the ignorance that a human being might reach. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the owner of all things. And He subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Most High, is the one that send the messengers from whoever He wills subhanahu wa ta'ala. And of course Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala send the best human beings to be the messengers. And the best of all messengers is Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the one that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bestowed his bounty unto him when he sent him from among the people of the companions of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to be the final messenger to all mankind. There's no difference between one human being or the other. As we know that prophethood has been in the lineage of Bani Israel, the children of Israel, for some time. And since Ya'qub alayhi salam, uh, Prophet Ya'qub alayhi salam, and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made the final messenger, someone that will be to all mankind, that the religion is not just to a certain group of people, not a certain race or a certain tribe, but it's to all mankind to embrace the beautiful way of life, and that is to submit themselves to the creator of the heavens and the earth, and that is Al-Islam. So the first benefit that we need to learn from the verse here, that we need not to be deceived. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows what's in the hearts of every human being. We do not have this capability. And we were not ordered to check what's in the hearts of people or to judge them based on what's in their hearts. We only take the outside appearance, which is something very, very important. That's why even the Prophet ﷺ himself, he would not name the hypocrites at his time. Although the Prophet ﷺ, it was revealed to him who are the real hypocrites, those who have disbelief in their hearts, and they just deceive the believers. But still the Prophet ﷺ teaching his ummah, his followers, that it's not for us to judge the hearts of the people. We just judge what is the outside appearance of them. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala here in this verse is calling the believers to be cautious, not to be deceived, not to have this full loyalty to the disbelievers and follow their path even if they would say such uh, beautiful things to them, or give them great promises and so on and so forth, the believers should be warned, should be cautious, because the Most High subhanahu wa ta'ala is warning them that they don't want any good to be revealed unto you. Basically what it means when it matters of revelation, out of the envy, as we heard before. Wallahu yakhtassu bi rahmatihi mayasha. Such a beautiful statement that the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not owned by the human being. And this is something that is mentioned in many verses in the Qur'an. That the disbelievers when they said that why this book was revealed to such a man, that it should have been revealed to someone that is honorable or a chief or so. أَهُمْ يَقْسِمُونَ رَحْمَةَ رَبِّكَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to them, refuting their call, are they the ones that would distribute the mercy of your Lord to whoever they will, the human being, the human being that is full of deficiencies, that is full of arrogance and bias and so on and so forth, they will make the judgment, why this messenger and not this messenger? Would they be the ones to distribute the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? The mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the owner of it, is the most high, the creator of the heavens and the earth. And the human being need to humble oneself to the creator of the heavens and the earth. Not to look into oneself and to think that we have and we have and we have. Yes, we might have many things and many qualities. But this is when it comes to uh, one another, with relation to one another, human beings. But when it comes to the relationship between the human being and the creator of the heavens and the earth, we have to feel that deficiency. We have to feel that we are in need of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is a great benefit that we need to take with us at all times and all of our affairs, that we need to turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sincerely, that victory, that goodness, that happiness in this life and in the hereafter, that the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that once a person has this mercy from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he or she are the most happiest and successful person on the face of earth, in this life and in the hereafter. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is informing us in this verse and other verses in the Qur'an, that whoever wants the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whoever wants to be subjected to the vast mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he needs to be among the followers of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose for this mercy to be 
to the Prophet والسلام, and to the followers of the Prophet In Rahmatullahi Qareebun Minan Muhsinin that the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is to those and close to those who are good doers. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also said in Surah Al Araf, Wa Rahmati wasi'at kulla shay. That my mercy encompasses everything. The mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala encompasses everything. But it who would this mercy will be for? Fasaktubuha. Lilladina Yatakun those Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would write this mercy. For those who have the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, those who Alladina Yattabiuna, those who would follow the Prophet, the illiterate Prophet, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will have his mercy unto them. So once the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was sent, all the paths and leads to the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, meaning the everlasting one. Although the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the face of earth to everyone. That's why how people eat and drink and all of this is from the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whether it's for the disbelievers or the believers. But the real mercy, the everlasting one, the mercy which means the revelation, the guidance, which is the real mercy, the everlasting one, this is something has been blocked once the Prophet ﷺ was sent, except behind the Prophet ﷺ. وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ We have not sent you, O Prophet of Allah ﷺ, except as a mercy to all mankind. We need to learn the way of the Prophet ﷺ. The manners of the Prophet ﷺ is something to be learned from the Qur'an and the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam for the mercy of Allah and for the followers of the Prophet alayhi wa sallatu wa sallam. Wallahu dhul fadli al-azim and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the possessor of great bounties. We can never seek bounties. We can never get any bounties except from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We continue inshallah ta'ala after the break. أَفَلَا يَتَدَبَّرُونَ الْقُرْآنَ the philosophy of Islamic law, a program for restoring belief and trust within Muslims' mind and heart, and for re-establishing a true concept about Islamic rules for others. Amazing stories. In this program, we get to know about people of the past whose stories were mentioned in the Islamic tradition and related by the Prophet, peace be upon him. That verily, us, meaning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we tell you about the best of the stories. We tell you about the best of the stories. When we narrate a story, when we read a story, when we try to benefit from a story, what we are trying to do in reality is to go back through the steps, through the different parts and sections of this story until the story is actually completed and that we can take the actual benefit directly from the story. Sheikh Lutfi will narrate these stories in his program Amazing Stories. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered one of the lands to come closer, the destination. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered one whole city to come closer, to move closer to this dead person. Alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam ala Rasulillah. Continuing with verse number 105 from Surah Al-Baqarah. And as we heard before the break, that the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is so vast, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala choose for His mercy whomsoever He wills. And this is a great benefit we need to learn. That we need to subject ourselves to the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Who would ever on the face of earth would reject to be subjected to the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that is an everlasting happiness. But as a fact, this mercy from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the everlasting one, meaning the revelation, the truth, the guidance, is by following the way of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. If you have a Quran with you, and I would encourage you to do that, if we go to Surah Al-A'raf, 
which is surah number 7, chapter number 7 in the Quran, surah Al-A'raf, verse number 156 and 157. It states this fact. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and part of the verse that I mentioned, part of it before the break, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَرَحْمَتِي وَسِعَتْ كُلَّ شَيْءٍ That my mercy will encompass everything. فَسَأَكْتُبُهَا I will write it for. فَسَأَكْتُبُهَا لِلَّذِينَ يَتَّقُونَ Those who have taqwa. The fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and dutiful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَيُؤْتُونَ الزَّكَاةِ And those who would give the zakah, the obligatory charity. وَالَّذِينَ هُمْ بِآيَاتِنَا يُؤْمِنُونَ And those who believe in our signs, the physical signs and the religious signs, the revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Who are those people that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would write for them His mercy, will have the mercy to them? الَّذِينَ يَتَّبِعُونَ الرَّسُولَ النَّبِيَّ الْأُمِّيِّ الَّذِي يَجِدُونَهُ مَكْتُوبًا عِنْدَهُمْ فِي التَّوْرَاتِ وَالْإِنْجِيلِ يَأْمُرُهُمْ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ وَيَنْهَاهُمْ عَنِ الْمُنْكَرِ وَيُحِلُّ لَهُمُ الطَّيِّبَاتِ وَيُحَرِّمُ عَلَيْهِمُ الْخَبَائِثِ وَيَضَعُ عَنْهُمْ إِصْرَهُمْ وَالْأَغْلَالَ الَّتِي كَانَتْ عَلَيْهِمْ Which means those who يتبعون It's a present tense That means they're constantly in state of following Not just once in a while Not just the companions رضي الله عنهم but from every generation, these are the people that would have the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from all mankinds, those who would follow, constantly following, Ar-Rasul, the Messenger, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and Nabi al-Ummi, the Prophet, the illiterate one, the final Messenger of Allah, الذي يجدونه مكتوبا عندهم, the one that they have him in their books, in the Torah, and in the Injil, the Gospel. In these two books, the name of the Prophet ﷺ is mentioned. It is there till today. If people would go back to the original language without the distortion of the translation. يَأْمُرُهُمْ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ He would order them to do what is good. وَيَنْهَاهُمْ عَنِ الْمُنْكَرِ And forbidding them to do evil. وَيُحِلُّ لَهُمُ الطَّيِّبَاتِ And make what is طَيِّبَاتِ What is pure, permissible for them. وَيُحَرِّمُ عَلَيْهِمُ الْخَبَائِثِ and makes the evil and the wicked and the impure forbidden unto them. This is the characteristics of the beautiful way of life. It is perfect. It's not for mankind to manipulate the religion. It is not for the mankind to see what is haram and what is halal. It is for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. And that's why if the religion of Islam is examined by the disbelievers, they would see the perfect way of life and all of it, and all of the rulings in the deen of Allah. وَيَضَعُ عَنْهُمْ إِصْرَهُمْ وَالْأَغْلَالَ الَّتِي كَانَتْ عَلَيْهِمْ And the Prophet ﷺ would relieve the nations before, the people of the book, from the burdens that has been on their shoulders as a result of their sins, the ease in the religion of Islam. الَّتِي كَانَتْ عَلَيْهِمْ فَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا بِهِ Then listen carefully, those who believe in him, وَعَزَّرُوهُ وَنَصَرُوهُ Those who would honor him and give him victory, given victory to who? to the Prophet ﷺ. Is it only the companions of Allah anhum? The answer is no. It's for every Muslim, for every human being to give victory to the Prophet ﷺ by following him, by giving victory to the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. This is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from us. This is if you want the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is distributed according to how much we are given victory to the way of the Prophet ﷺ. Some of us, we choose to follow the Prophet ﷺ that much. And this is how would be the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala unto such a person. The more that we follow the way of the Prophet ﷺ and exalt his way, the more Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would have mercy on us. And this is the real happiness in this life and in the hereafter. وَاتَّبَعُوا النُّورَ الَّذِي أُنزِلَ مَعَهُ And those who would follow, again, وَاتَّبَعُوا Those who followed an nur the light that has been revealed with him, and that is the Qur'an, and the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ, أُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْمُفْلِحُونَ They are the successful ones. So we see the Qur'an explains itself. What has been mentioned in general, it becomes more specific in other verses in the Qur'an. So this is what we need to uh, practice, and this is something that we need to have the belief in our hearts, that the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is so vast, but the guidance, which is the real mercy, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose for this mercy the believers, the Prophet ﷺ and his followers. And that's why this is the call to all mankind to embrace the beautiful way of life, to submit oneself to the creator of the heavens and the earth, the religion of Moses 
the religion of Jesus alayhi salam, the religion of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi salam of all messengers. Wallahu dhul fadlil azim, which means that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the possessor of great bounties. So again, the bounties is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That means what? What's the benefit here? That we should not seek it from anyone but the creator of the heavens and the earth alone. وَمَا بِكُمْ مِنْ نِعْمَةٍ فَمِنَ اللَّهِ There is no bounty. There is no favor unto you except it's from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Nothing. So we can go on and mention the bounties of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is such a beautiful thing. This is something that we need to take upon ourselves. How many favors of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala unto us? Food and drink and health and life itself to be able to breathe the air, to be able to eat and drink and to have relationships and to have families. All of these are favors from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the most virtuous favor is to be guided to the truth, to understand the purpose of our life. That this life is not just the 60, 70 years that we live, it's the everlasting one. To fit everything according to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from us, this is the great bounties from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we need to have this act of worship by constantly witnessing the bounties of Allah. We need to say that with our tongues also. When we sit and eat as a family, we need to remind our children that this is from the bounties of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That what they're eating is not from the father bringing it. It is not from the human being doing it. The human beings are nothing but like a machine or a mean, just a mean. But the real bestower of all favors is the most merciful subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose the believers and the disbelievers to give them from his bounties for what purpose? For them to subject themselves to the real mercy. And that is the guidance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wallahu dhul fadlil azim. If we keep on pondering over these words, this is a lifetime changing for the believers. The heart will constantly move with these feelings, with these acts of worship, and this is what we need to make sure that the foundation is sound and correct. Once the heart is witnessing all of these great bounties from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then the tongue will speak accordingly. And our actions will be accordingly. Once we see with our hearts that the most important favor, that the most virtuous thing on the face of earth, that we're ready to sacrifice everything to protect this great bounty, is the bounty of being guided to the truth, the bounty of the religion of Islam. To worship the creator of the heavens and the earth alone. To be protected from associating partners with Allah. This is the real bounty. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in verse number 106 says, مِنْهَا مِثْلِهَا أَلَمْ تَعْلَمْ أَنَّ اللَّهَ عَلَى كُلِّ شَيْءٍ قَدِيرٍ مَا means we do not abrogate a verse or cause it to be forgotten, except that we bring forth one better than it, or similar to it. Do you not know that Allah is over all things competent? And this verse came after the verse that we heard earlier, because the Jews at the time of the Prophet ﷺ claiming that it's not befitting the revelation from Allah to be abrogated, to have naskh in it. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is refuting their call. Because they said that out of the envy that they had in their hearts. So they said, how can some verses in the Qur'an would abrogate others? And we know that this is a fact. This is part of our religion. That some verses in the Qur'an would come later in the order of time that it was revealed to the Prophet ﷺ. Ruling that was there in the beginning. And then it is cancelled by another verse, abrogated by another verse. A way of raising the believers. And a way to show for the believers the bounties of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala unto them. Imagine, the Prophet sallallahu was sent to the Arabs at the time and they were in extreme jahiliyyah ignorance. And imagine that all the orders of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala come to them immediately in the same instant. This is over the capacity of the human beings. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is teaching us that things has to be done gradually. That the first thing, the most important thing that stays with the believers at all times is the tawheed, the oneness of worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Their belief. And that's why the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, for 13 years in Mecca, there was not too many of the regulations and the halal and the haram. It was the tawheed, the oneness of worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
Once this is built in the heart, then the submission becomes so easy. And this complex and ease in the religion of Islam becomes something that is in their nature. So that's why there is abrogation, yes. And it's something that does not negate one's sound mind. Why is that? We would see that in even in our physical being. How that we go from one stage to the other. We start in the womb of our mothers, being child, being an adolescent, being grown up adult, being old in age. We go through stages. And the same thing every day comes, the person increases one's iman. And at the time of the Prophet ﷺ, when the revelation was coming down, there were certain things that comes later, abrogates that came in the beginning of the revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we see that even before the Prophet ﷺ refuting their call that there is no abrogation in the revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is not true. Every messenger Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent, he would abrogate the messengers before. If he comes with the book abrogating some or all the rulings that was before. But the one thing that never abrogated is the matters of belief. The matters of tawheed, the oneness of worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It was for every messenger, the religion was the same. The religion is the religion of Islam. And every messenger was sent, the people should follow that messenger. And the final messenger is Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Even when it comes to the rulings of halal and haram, permissible things and non-permissible things. We see that it's haram, for, for example, it's not permissible for a man to marry his own sister. This is haram, this is forbidden. As we all know, this is something that is consensus. But at the time of Adam alayhi salam, the first human being, how did people reproduce? It was permissible for them that the offsprings of Adam alayhi salam, that they would get married, otherwise we would not exist today. So this was a, a permissible act at the time of Adam alayhi salam, and then it became abrogated later on. Why? Because the environment is different, the situation is different, the, even the human being and the excel of the human being and intellect has been increasing in their experience and, and so on and so forth. So this is something that is present in the revelations of Allah, but it's something also is a miracle in itself. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, مَا نَنْسَخْ مِنْ آيَةٍ أَوْ نُنْسِهَا نَأْتِ بِخَيْرٍ مِنْهَا أَوْ مِثْلِهَا That anything that has been abrogated or been forgotten, meaning that it's not there anymore, whether it's there to be recited, but the ruling has been cancelled, and this is in over uh, 60-something verses, as it's mentioned by the ulama of the tafsir. That's why when we recite the Qur'an, we should not make the tafsir, the explanation of the Qur'an, based on our own desires. Because there are certain verses that the ruling was there originally, and then it was abrogated by another verse. So for a person to be able to give the tafsir of the Qur'an, the person has to learn the abrogation. and nasikh wal mansukh What is earlier and what is later? What is, has been abrogated? This is something that has consensus among the people of knowledge. And it shows the bounties of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that how things has been changed for the better of the people. Not necessarily something that became less, because in some of the abrogations, it was less. For example, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made it an obligation for the companions of the Prophet wasallam that they would have uh, to pray the night prayer. The night prayer, the Qiyamul Layl, was mandatory in the beginning. And then they were relieved from such an obligation, and only the five daily prayers were obligated. This is something that was abrogated during the life of the Prophet ﷺ. Some other things you would, you would see that it was abrogated at the time of the Prophet ﷺ, that things had increased, but increased for the betterment of the human beings. For example, originally the salah was only two rak'ah. Only two rak'ah and it was not four rak'ah, four units of the salah. And then after that it became four rak'ah. And this is something that has been abrogated. For example, in the beginning there was no obligatory fast. And the day of Ashura, the 10th of Al-Muharram, was made obligatory for the believers to fast. But then after that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala abrogated such a ruling by the fasting of the whole month of Ramadan. So it was just one day and then it became a whole month which is the month of Ramadan. It's not more to make it difficult. It's more for the best and the betterment of the rewards and the iman and the faith for the believers. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the owner of all things. 
The believers, the human beings, they just need to submit themselves to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What's the wisdom behind abrogation? Something that inshallah ta'ala, if we have time, we'll talk about it after the break. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us life. Stay with us inshallah. أَفَلَا يَتَدَبَّرُونَ الْقُرْآنَ The Philosophy of Islamic Law A program for restoring belief and trust within Muslims' mind and heart and for re-establishing a true concept about Islamic rules for others. Amazing stories. In this program, we get to know about people of the past whose stories were mentioned in the Islamic tradition and related by the Prophet, peace be upon him. That verily us, meaning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we tell you about the best of the stories. We tell you about the best of the stories. When we narrate a story, when we read a story, when we try to benefit from a story, what we are trying to do in reality is to go back through the steps, through the different parts and sections of this story until the story is actually completed and that we can take the actual benefit directly from the story. Sheikh Lutfi will narrate these stories in his program Amazing Stories. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered one of the lands to come closer, the destination. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered one whole city to come closer, to move closer to this dead person. Alhamdulillah, wassalatu wassalamu ala rasulillah. Continuing with verse 106 from Surah Al-Baqarah and the subject of abrogation or naskh, that the wisdom behind this, that some verses would abrogate others, and this is something that we would see throughout the Quran, inshallah ta'ala. Why is that? And again, that's not many. But it's something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will for it to happen for great benefits. One of which is when people would see the bounties of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala unto them. That the ruling originally was such a way and then it was abrogated by something else. And it's definitely something that is better for them or the same. For them to witness the bounties of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala unto them. Also it's kept or some of them are kept in the Quran. So that people would recite the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Quran is the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Even if the verse, the ruling of it has been abrogated by another verse, it's still the Quran is a cure. The cure to our hearts. And reciting the Quran in the Arabic language like this, this is a cure to our hearts. So this is something that is there to show also and the benefit of it for us to take the gradual steps to increase our iman. And this is something that fits the nature of the human being. We cannot change overnight. We need to take the time and the patience to do the best day after day. But there are certain criteria that is the foundation that has to be done right away. And that is the belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the matters of belief and the obligations and to stay away from what is haram, what is not permissible. And then we gradually increase our iman with the optional acts of worship. Same thing when a person embraces the religion of Islam. Can a person would embrace, meaning, apply all the different rules in the religion of Islam just overnight? Of course not. A person has to take the matter in a gradual way. What is the most important thing is to learn the tawheed, the oneness of worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa ordering Mu'adh radiallahu anhu when he sent him to Yemen to call the people into this gradual way. He said, فَجْعَلْ أَوَّلْ مَا تَدْعُوهُمْ إِلَيْهِ شَهَادَةْ أَلَّا إِلَا إِلَّا اللَّهِ That the first thing that you call them to is for them to bear witness that there's no one worthy of worship except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. لَا إِلَا إِلَا اللَّهِ The first pillar of Islam. فَإِنَّهُمْ أَطَعُوكَ لَذَلِكَ If they would accept this and obey you in this, then فَأَعْلِمُهُمْ Then inform them أَنَّ اللَّهَ افْتَرَضَ عَلَيْهِمْ خَمْسَ صَلَوَات the five daily prayers. So this gradual way of teaching and one thing after another 
This is how something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala raising the companions radiallahu anhum to be the best nation ever brought to mankind with the matters of uh, abrogation which is a nasakh. مَا نَنْسَخْ مِنْ آيَةٍ If one verse is abrogated, أَوْ نُنْسِهَا Or it becomes forgotten. And it doesn't mean that the Prophet wasallam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would make him forget something that would uh, be of no benefit. It's something that would serve the matters of the revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Something that it's the ruling of it, it's not there anymore as a result of excelling when it comes to the uh, nature of the human beings and their obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. نَأْتِ بِخَيْرٍ مِّنْهَا أَوْ مِثْلِهَا That better than the verse that was abrogated or the same of it, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bring. And this is one of the miracles of the Qur'an and the rulings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. أَلَمْ تَعْلَمْ أَنَّ اللَّهَ عَلَى كُلِّ شَيْءٍ قَدِيرٌ Don't you know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is capable of all things? This is refuting the call that there's no abrogation, abrogation. That whatever they would make a decision who is to be the messenger and who is not, this is not for the human beings. This is only from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which is another benefit why abrogation was there. For people to submit themselves to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For them to learn that it's not for us to make a decision whether something that is permissible or non-permissible. This is to the Lord of the heavens and the earth. This is to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when the ruling is in the beginning is in such a way, then it's abrogated to something else. Then the believers, they say we listen and we obey and they submit themselves to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Of course, once the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa died, the matter is over. So we cannot say that it's permissible for a person to drink intoxications, for example, and wine. Because the wine has been forbidden gradually. There is verses in the Quran that says, do not make the salah, do not approach the salah when you are intoxicated. So it means that we can be intoxicated if we're not making the salah. Of course not. Why? Because this was a stage and then it was abrogated afterwards when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forbade wine and intoxications altogether. So this is the final ruling and this is what stays forever. So after the death of the Prophet ﷺ, it is not permissible for someone to say, let's go back and see how the rulings were first, and then we do whatever was permissible in the beginning of the revelation to the Prophet ﷺ, and then we change afterwards. Of course not. This is not permissible. This is the consensus among all Muslims that the rulings are already saved, clear, finished. Once the Prophet ﷺ died, once the revelation has been terminated and completed and perfected, that's the beauty of the Qur'an, this is the beauty of the religion of Islam. There is nothing left for someone to complete. The religion has been completed. It fits all nations, it fits all times whatsoever, it doesn't matter whether we are in the most sophisticated time of living, or in a city, or in the desert, or the jungle, it doesn't matter. The rulings of the religion of Islam is so perfect that it fits every nation, every environment, not like the other ways of life which they had to change things. They had to change it and abandon so much of their religion because it didn't fit their time of living. See the benefit of abrogation here. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is teaching us that this is the way that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered the believers and once the revelation was finished, that would fit the nature of the human beings and that's why there is nothing in our religion of Islam that we would say that we can abrogate it now. It's finished, it's completed. And it would fit the nature and the way of life on every single part of the world, different than other ways of life in which they had to uh, twist things and manipulate things so that they would be able to live uh, accordingly. But in the religion of Islam, the matter has been saved and clear. And that's why the verse is teaching us and refuting the call of the Jews at the time of the Prophet ﷺ at all times that the religion is not to be abrogated, that this is at the time of the Prophet ﷺ was valid. And this is something that is valid also in one's intellect, as we mentioned in some of the examples. The different types of abrogations. This is of course the subject in matters of the science of the Qur'an. The Qur'an abrogates the Qur'an. The uh, Qur'an abrogates what's in the Sunnah. The Sunnah abrogates the Qur'an and so on and with the different examples. And inshallah ta'ala, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us life, we can see that throughout the verses of the Qur'an. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, أَلَمْ تَعْلَمْ أَنَّ اللَّهَ عَلَى كُلِّ شَيْءٍ قَدِيرٌ Don't you know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is capable of all things? Whether, whether it's matters of rulings, 
whether it's physical matters, all of our affairs, and that's why the believers, they need to subject themselves and humble themselves to the orders of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. <coughs> then the next verse, 107, أَلَمْ تَعْلَمْ أَنَّ اللَّهَ لَهُ مُلْكُ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ Again, to confirm the belief in the hearts of the believers. Don't you know <coughs> that to Allah belongs the dominion of the heavens and the earth? أَلَمْ تَعْلَمْ أَنَّ اللَّهَ لَهُ مُلْكُ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ Don't you know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala belonged to him, the dominion, the ownership of the heavens and the earth? وَمَا لَكُمْ مِن دُونِ اللَّهِ مِنْ وَلَيٍّ وَلَا نَصِيرٍ Which means, and you have not besides Allah any protector or any helper. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the owner of all things. So as a result of the verse of abrogation, as a result of all the verses in the Qur'an, we need to have this belief and confirm this belief in our hearts that since Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the owner of all things, that has to have an effect, the submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is not for the human beings to say, this messenger should not be a messenger, or this messenger should be from among ourselves, or this or that. People should submit themselves to the creator of the heavens and the earth, and humble themselves to the orders of Allah, because he is the owner of all things. The human beings, they don't even own themselves. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one that created them, and he is the owner of the heavens and the earth. وَمَا لَكُمْ مِن دُونِ اللَّهِ مِن وَلَيٍّ وَلَا نصير. This is the real happiness on the face of earth and in the hereafter. This is the real power and courage and strength that the believers would have when they believe and their hearts is full of this and their actions is according to this that they have no besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala none besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the creator of the heavens and the earth any helper nor a protector. The helper, the real helper is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the protector is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala al-wali the one that is the supporter the one that is close to you. And an nasir the one that would give you victory, the one that would aid you. All of that is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The believers they see with their own hearts clearly that the one that helped them and guides them and give them victory in this life and in the hereafter is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's why when the messengers of Allah, the disbelievers would try to abuse them and torture them, they would say, وَلَا نَصْبِرَنَّ عَلَى مَا آذَيْتُمُونَ وَعَلَى اللَّهِ فَلْيَتَوَكَّلِ مُتَوَكِّلُونَ That we will be patient when you would cause harm to us. Because unto Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we put our trust. وَعَلَى اللَّهِ فَلْيَتَوَكَّلِ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ وَمَا لَنَا أَلَّا نَتَوَكَّلَ عَلَى اللَّهِ وَقَدْ هَدَانَا سُبُّ لَنَا That why shouldn't we be, put our trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and He is the one that guided us to our path. وَعَلَى اللَّهِ فَلْيَتَوَكَّلِ الْمُتَوَكِّلُونَ Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, people should put their trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because He's the only protector. And He is the only helper. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and the companions of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and the followers of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, يَا أَيُّهَا النَّبِي حَسْبُكَ اللَّهُ مَنِ اتَّبَعَكَ مِنَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ O Prophet of Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is sufficient for you. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is sufficient for those who follow you among the believers. And again and again, we do not need no one but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We need to turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone, seeking help, victory, guidance. All of our affairs, we need to seek that from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. We need to always witness that anything happens to us, anything even happens from the disbelievers, anything that bad happens to the believers, they need to witness that this is also from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why? Because He's the owner of the heavens and the earth. And it has a great wisdom behind it. Anything happens by the great wisdom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and power and knowledge so that people would turn to the creator of the heavens and the earth alone. And they would seek the protection from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. Sometimes when the believers or when the human beings are ignorant about these meanings, then the disbelievers will try to abuse them. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would send them unto them so that all the worldly means won't be there for the believers. So the hearts of the believers, when they try all means and all means would fail, they would turn to the creator of the heavens and the earth alone. And once their heart is completed and full of this trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then all forms of goodness and victory would happen to the believers. وَمَا لَكُمْ مِن دُونِ اللَّهِ مِنْ وَلَيٍّ وَلَا نَصِيرٍ 
So the practical benefit, and again, I would encourage everyone to write to us and to call also and to mention how can we benefit practically from uh, what we heard. And this is something that has so great benefits in our hearts and in our affairs and all of our practical way of life. And inshallah ta'ala, we'll continue with that and we'll expand on that in the, the next episodes and to come inshallah ta'ala. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to uh, give us victory and to make us among those who are guided and to make us ponder over the words of Allah and make us benefit from the Qur'an, to live the Qur'an like the way of the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam. So till next time, I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept our deeds and to forgive our sins. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa barak ala muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Wa salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. أفلا يتدبرون القرآن ولو كان من عند غير الله لوجدوا فيه اختلافا كثيرا أفلا يتدبرون القرآن ولو كان من عند غير الله لوجدوا فيه اختلافا كثيرا أفلا يتدبرون يدبرون القرآن ولو كان من عند غير الله لوجدوا فيه اختلافا كثيرا